Welcome to Market Movers. I'm Jim Murio with Scott Martin. Hi, Jim. Okay, so despite rates, long end rates particularly have gone up a little bit in the last week or so. Yes. But the world is still awash in negative rates. <laughs> trillions. Negative of it, rates. Yes, trillions right. of dollars. Okay. What are we even supposed to make of that? Well, I think one thing you make of it, Jim, is the fact that the global economy is definitely showing concerns of, of growth issues. And also the fact that we've started to see our Fed take maybe a little bit more of a dovish stance. So are rates going to follow those rates overseas with respect to the U.S. is the big question. Well, that's the question. If the Fed, from where we are now, adopt some more dovish stance. Can that make our long end rates go up? It could, yes. And, and I think that would be the intention that the Fed would have here, Jim. I think the key point, though, still remains, what does that do to economic data? Because if economic data doesn't respond as it may hasn't, or hasn't maybe so far overseas, that may keep rates low. Interesting. Now, before we dive into our trade discussion, I'd like to point out that these trades are examples, not recommendations or advice. We're going to be talking about gold and the E-mini uh, e S&P. Yeah, Jim. So gold is a really, I think, fun commodity to look at when it comes to to negative rates when it comes to dovish uh, central banks and Amen. certainly everything that's going on with slower economic data. So there's some interesting ways to express yourself potentially as far as a trade example when it comes to looking at GC and some of the things I'm especially seeing in the charts. Uh, so Jim, specifically today, I'm looking at buying the week one October 1525 1550 GC call spread for about seven ticks. This trade risks 700 to make a potential 1800. Expires on October 4th, so we get through the rest of the month. The GC underlying when I priced this was 1515. And just looking at that overall kind of Fed stance, both here and overseas, being more dovish, being more liquidity driven, and the fact that gold so far, at least this summer, has benefited from those stances in the central bank arena. I don't think there can be a more straightforward trade. If rates are negative all over the world, we're concerned that rates might go negative or closer to negative here. Gold is a nice I agree, and I think that's a great reaction that we'll see long term right. if rates continue to hover lower. Okay, so I'm looking at the DEES now micro E mini SP, okay, because I still think negative rates around the world are benefiting our stock market and lower rates here I think are as well. So if, if the E-mini DS S&P trades 3015, I think that's a spot to buy. So a stop in buy. That's above where the market you is now. When we, I, we do them all the time. The market right now is trading around 3000. Mm -hmm. So 3015 3, above it. You buy it on strength with a target of 3075 on the upside and a stop placed below 29.85. So it risks $150 to make a potential 300. And again, I underscore the fact that I think that low rates around the world are benefiting our stock market. Uh, I agree, and that's similar to my GC expression too, Jim, is I believe the lower rates, the lower, say, just kind of, at least the lower premise that we have going forward, if we can continue to see weak economic data, more maybe even Fed action in the future, that would also portend, I think, a better boost for stocks. Last quick question. We said that perhaps the curve could steepen if the Fed goes dovish. Is global demand gonna make that a very difficult proposition for long rates? At some point it is. Yes, but for now, it looks like global demand is still hanging in there enough to keep you through that premise. Thank you for joining us at Market Movers. I'm Jim Urio, where we are helping to make you a better trader.